terrorism, a never-ending problem for every country. At times, we have wondered, isn't there an end to this? Can we control it? If you are a person who is wondering the same, watch this video. Firstly, we will see briefly about the mandate of UNSC. See, the core mandate of the Security Council contained in Article 24, Clause 1 of the UN Charter is to take primary responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security. So, this is the core mandate of UN Charter. And that is exactly why UNSC's permanent member countries are provided with veto power and other countries like India don't have. See, this is the basis of the Resolution 1267. Now, let us see what is Resolution 1267 of 1999. See, the Resolution 1267 of the United Nations Security Council deals with the issue of terrorism. Its main objective is to stop terrorist activities by issuing sanctions against them. See, sanctions here means a threatened penalty for disobeying a rule or law. See, the Resolution 1267 was introduced in the year 1999. And subsequent changes were made in the years 2011 and 2015. See, with the adoption of 2011 resolution, the Security Council decided that the list of individuals and entities would be split into two. And one of them looked after the Al-Qaeda and the other looked after the Taliban. And again, after the adoption of 2015 resolution, the Security Council decided to expand the listing criteria to include the individuals and entities supporting the Islamic State in Iraq and Levant, which is shortly referred as ISIL. Now, this is about the basics of the resolution 1267. Now, coming to what is discussed in the article, the resolution of 1267 allows any UN member state to propose adding the name of a terrorist or a terror group to a consolidated list. And this list is maintained by 1267 committee that has affiliations to Al-Qaeda and ISIL. See, the article says that China has placed a hold on a joint US-Indo resolution this resolution is to designate the lashkar e taiba commander Shahid Mahmood as a terrorist affiliated to Al-Qaeda and ISIS. See, through placing a hold to the proposed name, China has used its veto power. And as a permanent member of the UNSC, China can do this any number of times. And this is what is discussed in the article. See, what is this article about? The article is about the addition of a name of a terrorist in the consolidated list maintained by the 1267 committee. Now, what is the criteria for the declaration of terrorist? The criteria includes acts or activities indicating that individual or group or undertaking or any entity is associated with ISIL and Al-Qaeda. This means that they are first participating in the financing, planning, facilitating, preparing or perpetrating of acts in the support of terrorism. Second, they are supplying, selling or transferring arms and related material to terrorism. And third, they are recruiting or otherwise supporting acts or activities of ISIL or Al-Qaeda or any cell or derivative thereof. So, these are the criteria for which an individual, a group, an undertaking or entity is declared as terrorist and they are proposed to be added in the consolidated list. Now, coming to the special committee which looks after the resolution 1267. See, the committee comprises 15 members of the Security Council and it makes its decisions by consensus. Here, 15 nations include permanent members which is 5 countries and non-permanent members which includes 10 countries who are elected from the member states of United Nations. See, non-permanent members, they are cyclically elected for a period of two years. Here know that currently India is one of the 10 non-permanent members to the UNSC. So, what does this mean? This means that India is one of the members of the special committee which looks after the resolution 1267. But since it is a non-permanent member, it does not have veto power like China. Now, coming to the mandate of the committee, See, the committee is mandated to oversee the implementation of the sanctions measures. And it is mandated to oversee the designated individuals and entities 
who meet the listing criteria set out in the relevant resolutions and thirdly it is mandated to consider and decide upon the notifications and requests for exemptions from the sanctions measures and fourthly it is mandated to consider and decide upon the request to remove a name from the ISIL al qaeda sanctions list fifthly it is mandated to conduct periodic and specialized reviews of the entries on ISIL and al qaeda sanctions list sixthly it is mandated to examine the reports presented by the monitoring team and after that it is mandated to report annually to the security council on the implementation of the sanctions measures and finally it is mandated to conduct the outreach activities now these are all the mandates of the 1267 resolution overlooking committee now coming to the effects of the sanction see the effects of the sanctions include three things one is asset freeze the other one is travel ban and the third one is arms embargo now let's see them one by one see first of all asset freeze is imposed see the purpose of the assets freeze is to deny the listed individuals groups undertakings and entities the means to support terrorism it is obvious right if we cut the finance then they can't support the terrorism to achieve this it seeks to ensure that no funds and financial assets or economic resources of any kind are available to any individual or any group of terrorism and this is done for so long as they remain subjected to the sanctions measures see this particular type of sanction is done to stop the economical support given to the terrorist activities now coming to the second one do you remember what is the second one exactly it is the travel ban see the purpose of the travel ban is to limit the mobility of the listed individuals see member states are encouraged to add the name of the listed individuals to their visa watch list and they are also encouraged to add the names of the listed individuals to their national watch list see this is done to ensure the effective implementation of travel ban see if they are watched then only we can limit their movement right and this is about the travel ban now thirdly there is this arms embargo and it is imposed on the sanctioned individual and it is imposed on the sanctioned individual or the group see the obligation of member states to implement the arms embargo means that they have to prevent the direct or indirect supply sale or transfer of arms and related material to the sanctioned individual or group now apart from this technical advice assistance or training related to military activities are also prevented to the sanctioned individuals or groups now these are all the effects of sanctions on the designated terrorist now coming back to the article we saw that china has placed a hold on proposal to add shahid mahmood to the 1267 terrorist list right now what are all the reasons given by china for that china says that there is no conclusive evidence to prove the wrong doing of the accused and it also said that it needs time to study the issue before coming to a conclusion regarding including sahid mahmood in the terrorist list see the real reason for placing the hold might be to not affect the friendly relation that china maintains with pakistan why is pakistan coming here see pakistan is where sahid mahmood is based so to not offend pakistan china may have done that but what is china saying officially it is saying that there is no conclusive evidence now we can't do much here why is that because china has veto power in unsc but india it is a non permanent member so what are the ways in which india can raise the issue see india can raise the issue in the fatf meetings fatf is nothing but the financial action task force and it was established in the year 1989 by a group of seven summit that is g7 summit in paris see it was established initially to examine and develop measures to combat money laundering then subsequently the mandate of fatf got expanded to incorporate efforts to combat terrorist financing in addition to money laundering now other than fatf india and us have built their own separate list of most wanted terrorists see they have done this to document the cases against the terrorist with a view to eventually receiving a global cooperation on banning them 
and apart from this india can also raise the issue in shanghai cooperation organization csco has a separate anti terrorism structure called rats and this rats is expanded as the regional anti terrorist structure now these are some of the other ways in which india can raise the issue of terrorism in the international arena now these are the things that you have to know regarding 1267 resolution see this asserts that in the international arena efforts are taken to combat terrorism now the benefit of the video lies in the fact that these points can be used in your civil services examination especially your mains if a question is asked related to terrorism you can very well quote 1267 resolution and you can mention about india's efforts to add terrorists and terror groups in the consolidated list of 1267 Now if you want to know more things like this and if you want to stay updated subscribe to Shankar Ayer's Academy's YouTube channel and also watch daily Hindu news analysis of Shankar Ayer's Academy thank you